Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. It's good to see you all. It's good to be seen, it's good to be heard, and it's good to be uh, rambling on with all these again for another week of who knows what. Who knows what we're going to get into. I actually do know what we're going to get into this week, but I'm not telling you just yet. You might have an idea, though, um, because you um, are, are reading the, the title of the, of the episode. Um, so more to that, more on that to come here shortly before we get started, I would just like to remind everybody all the ways that, um, you can support this podcast because this podcast comes to you, uh, through a very hardworking bag just shifted over here. Um, a very hardworking team of me. (laughs) Um, I don't have a team of, of producers, editors, you know, co-host or anything like that. I mean, this is it. This is this is the, the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast is a production that I put on and, you know, time is is, is spent with uh, recording this and, and, you know, post-editing and, and all the, the fun technological things that go into this sort of stuff. So if you want to help um, give back in a way um, or, or support in this podcast, you can click on the link tree link that is um, in the show notes. And in the description, if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, so please follow me on all my socials. That's going to be YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you can also become a patron on Patreon. You can actually become a member on the uh, platform, on the YouTube platform, like a channel member. Um, I'm, I'm very, t- I'm terrible at like <laughs> the perks thing um, on the channel. But it is just a nice way if you want to, you know, toss a coin to your heathen over here. Um, it's a great way of doing it. But... If you want to have something a bit more tangible, something that you can look at every day, put on every day, there is a, a pretty extensive merchandise store through Spring, and uh, that's linked in the Linktree link as well. So if you can go to, I think it's um, MidgardMusingStore.com, but it's 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 all down in the, the show notes on there. So definitely check that out. You can get yourself some t-shirts, hoodies, all of the kinds of apparel. Um, there's, there's, there's stuff for men, women, children, even infants and toddlers. Uh, as well as some other uh, assorted, you know, items that have the logo and stuff on uh, for Midgard Musing. So, if you want to support the brand, support the podcast. That is a great way of, of doing so. Um, and then you've got something that you can sport around, and people be like, "Ooh, where'd you get that? What's that about?" And you can tell them about it, and it's a it's it's really cool. Um, so yeah. Um, before we also uh, a couple other things I want to. Um, really just you know one main major thing I guess I want to mention is um, I've talked in the past about attending certain local um, like public events that that other groups around here put on some some like vending events where there's like games and other vendors other heathen or pagan vendors um, usually I'm attending uh, some public events that are hosted by Raven Moonhearth um, so I do want to mention to you all that um, next month, and uh, this has been, you know, this is a yearly recurring thing. Uh, so next month in May, um, up in uh, Springfield, I think it is, yeah, Springfield, Tennessee, um, Feast of the Fallen. It's a uh, middle of May, I think it's the, yeah, it's the weekend of May 12th, so May 12th, 13th through 14th. Um, it's a camping uh feast that the that the hearth puts on up there and in, in just outside of nashville and uh anyway there's going to be an event link that I'll, I'll post down so you guys can check out more about it but they, it's an annual event that they host every year um again they do camping they do games they have ritual um and it's a and it's it's an event to commemorate and remember in fondness um those who have who have died that have have fallen um military members, you know, people who have um, 
pass on in, in, in combat, I guess. So they have, I've never been to one of these rituals before. I've never been to one of these particular events before. So I'm really excited to attend for the first time. My wife and I will be there. Um, I will be offering, uh, as I like to do, um, offering rune readings. I will be uh, teaching a class on the topic, yet I don't know what will be the subject matter. I'm still coming up with that, but you know, once I get that out, probably announce that on next week's podcast episode. You guys can be looking, you know, looking forward to that if you're coming out to the event. Uh, and then my wife will be there um, offering some some goods, you know, so we've got goods and services. I will be providing the services. My wife, she's got the goods. It's a wood burning um, project that she has, uh, that she does on the side just for fun. But she's going to be uh, making some things and, and selling some things. And I'm sure taking orders if you want something that we don't have that you'd like for her to make. Um, some other like necklaces, earrings, some, some you know, pagan themed uh, jewelry. Um, so yes, we will be there at uh, Feast of the Fallen. We will be there <clears throat> all weekend long so Friday uh, Friday night Saturday and Saturday night and then when everything's done we'll be leaving Sunday uh, but we will be there and we hope to see you there as well uh, again information for that is down in the show notes and uh, description so be sure to check that out I think it's for like the whole weekend I think uh, the weekend pass is like 45 bucks and that includes your meals um, for, for, I think, dinner Friday night, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner on Saturday, and then breakfast on Sunday. And then they, they usually um, call it off. They, they, they shut the event down um, by lunchtime. And I don't remember if lunch is included. But either way, I mean, you get three square meals on Saturday. You get, you know, workshops, lessons, uh, vendors, games, ritual. Like, again, it's, it's a great time. The Hearth puts on a really great event. Um, I've been to their Suna Bloat event a couple times, went to Shadow Moot last year, will be returning for Shadow Moot this year. Um, so for those of you, for, you, for those of you that, are, that are you know in the relative area or that want to travel for something fun here in May, um, it's going to be, I said, May 12th through 14th. Uh, looking forward to seeing you all. So check all that out down below in the link tree link, and, or not the link tree, but in the show notes and in the description. All right. So, um, you know, this is, this is, this is one of those weeks where I was seriously, um, contemplating on, on which topic I wanted to cover, um, where I wanted to go, you know, with, with the, the subject matter this week, what I wanted the episode to be about. Um, cause there's so much stuff that's, you know, circulating in my mind and that I even have just kind of sitting, uh, in the backlog of, of, of things I've got. You know, graphics of, of of thumbnails or whatever that I've made for for episodes that I've never released that I've never recorded recorded and uh, you know so those things are always kind of like brewing in the back of my mind like man when I'm going to do that it might might be this week oh no something else comes up and this week was one of those weeks you know I was tossing up what I wanted to do something about um, I kind of had my mind set on one particular thing um, but then. Uh, as, as quite often happens, I, I see a comment, whether it's on a post from another content creator or whether it's on a comment made on a post that I made on one of my social platforms, you know, um, or just somebody that I'm connected to socially through other social apps, you know, something that they've talked about or we've chatted on the side. And, you know, so much of, of what these episodes end up becoming are fueled by or inspired by stuff like that. And so um, that's what this week's episode is going to be about. It's going to be about how we can sort of like reconcile or bring together the like modern forms of, of dealing with, I don't know what you want to call it, like uh, just life you know, I guess just life in general, how we can reconcile or, or, or make friendly the, the modern way of, of dealing with things and, and marrying it or incorporating the more ancient and maybe traditional um, methods or, or models that get taken. So this, this image, um, you guys have probably seen it 
you know, pop around uh, and, and on your various social platforms. It's been out for years. I've even shared it a few times. It, it makes me laugh every time I see it. Um, and it's a, it's like a screenshot from a from an old movie, and I don't exactly recall what movie it's from. Um, but this image, it's, it's 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 it cracks me up every time because I always feel like I'm called out, right? And it says, uh, you know, the the heading of it. Um, for those of you that are watching this on the video platform, it, it, it's here up now. Um, but for those of you that are listening, it's it's kind of like one of those memes that has, you know, the, the, the frame, the still frame of a movie um, with like a quote underneath it. But above it, it says me, a rational intellectual who reasoned out the entire plan and entered into it with prudence and good judgment. And then it says also me. And then below that is the image, the still, you know, the, the, the frame, still frame uh, from a scene of a movie. It's like these... You know, Norse like Viking looking guy sitting around and it says, What do the runes say? <laughs> and uh I, I crack up laughing because I'm like, it's a me, you know, like just at me next time, why don't you? Um because I've been there and I'm sure we all have too, where um, you know, we're we're facing some sort of a could be anything. I mean, and, and I think quite quite often this sort of thing uh comes into play for us as, as heathens or pagans when we're faced with something of a, of a challenge, right, in our life. Something that hits us that could really gum up the works or throw a monkey wrench into our plan. So, you know, we, we go through all of the, the rationalizing of it, the making things seem logical and, you know, talking through it maybe with some friends or, or peers or, or confidants, you know, or, or near and dear loved ones, maybe a, a spouse or a partner or just a close friend, you know, whatever the the dynamic with it with, of it would be, we, we find ourselves going through the process of, of again rationalizing, making something you know logically reasoning so through things, and then and then we also um, get into this mindset of well, let me consult the the runes or let me do some sort of you know. Um, Divin, divinatory work, you know, some some of our magical workings that, that we find ourselves incorporating, whether it's tarot or oracle cards or reading of bones or, or, or tea leaves or runes or any other sort of thing that um, a lot of, you know, non-traditional uh, religious practices might incorporate. Because um, I do know a lot of folks who are not strictly you know, uh, dedicated to a Norse path or a Germanic path of, of paganism, um, but that will, uh, you know, incorporate the runes into their into their divinatory work. And so again, I, I saw this. I laughed. This was a, this was uh, somebody who I'm not like personally connected to. I've not met this person before, but we're we're friends on on on, on social platforms, and he. Uh, he, he responded to, I because I, again, I responded with a, like a, a Mario gif that says, it's a me, because I do. I, I always feel like called out, like, I'm, I'm that guy. It's, it's, that's me right there. Like, if, if I'm a meme, that's it. And he said, you know, that, that might actually make for a decent podcast episode. And his question, or, or the thing that he poses, is how do you reconcile more modern forms of knowledge and thought with ancient and traditional models? Of life and thinking, and I thought, man, that's a that's a relatable topic, you know, because I think, like I said, I'm not the I can't be the only one that goes through life and experiences some of the things that I experience or that we experience, and you know, find ourselves again going through that rational thinking. Okay, you know, what should I do? How should I do it? What's the smart way of going about it? How should I execute it? And then also, you know, lighten our candles and, and incense or, or, you know, smudging an area or whatever we do in our individual, you know, private ways, our, our uh, individual cultic practices that um, would, would, would fall under, a, a, well, as, he's, as he's putting it, a, a more maybe ancient or traditional modes or models, you know, uh, of going about it. And I have to think about 
you know, we, 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 we oftentimes we're going to look to maybe sources or we're going to go, you know, based off of maybe folklore or, or other stories of, you know, what was done in ancient times that falls under this category. You know, you read about um, as much as Odin knows, uh, we'll just go down with that example, right? As much as Odin knows and is, is always seeking knowledge, you know, he, he, he goes and he um, consults the Cirrus um, and, and, and wants to, to know things that even he himself doesn't doesn't know right so he could rationalize things or he could think through things in a pretty I think logical way with Odin being who he is uh, but still goes in and, and goes down that path of seeking uh, knowledge in a, in a more mystical through a mystic you know mystical channel um, we don't know exactly if they were runes it's I think it's it's largely assumed that they were but you know when when uh, in in Tacitus Tacitus, Tacitus, however you say it, the Roman guy who uh, wrote his, his Germania and, and documents not necessarily eyewitness things, but, but things that his, his troops had witnessed. He's, he's sort of like secondhand uh, source writing things down about how Germanic tribes did it. You know, in Tacitus's Germania, we, we hear about how um, the, the tribes or, or the, the, the people would cast lots and they were symbols or they were they were they were marks cut into branches of a fruit bearing tree or or whatever the terminology i think it's i think it's a fruit bearing tree you know but they were pieces of the of the wood from a fruit bearing tree where symbols were carved or marked into them <clears throat> and they were cast at random um again it doesn't say that they were runes i don't think that even in the in the older translations it could even be thought that they are runes that, that he's talking about, but because we don't know, I think it's just been popularly assumed that they gotta be runes. Um, and as we all know, I mean, like, runes have been used for a relatively short period of time in the sense of, of divinatory or, or magic. And I've been also seeing a lot of, uh, of controversy up lately between the academic or scholarly types of our runes themselves magic are they not um, there seems to be a an argument in favor of both you know from both sides um, I think ultimately if you're gonna think that the runes have any sort of inherent magic in them then there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of UPG uh, that that's rooted in, you know, your own personal unverified gnosis's experiences, things that have happened that you've know are, are are real for you that you you know you can't necessarily say it's 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 real or true for everybody. Um, but I think there there there's there's compelling arguments on 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 both ends of the spectrum to you know to to make. Um, I I've personally worked with runes enough to have feel feel to have feelings that there is maybe not just maybe they're not inherently magical but that that the working with them is is where the magic comes alive you know uh, where, where things can be manifested or things can be seen and so you know whatever whatever form of, of divination you 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 tend to to dabble in if it's a mixture of many different types or if you were a bit more focused like i mean myself personally i i don't Know the first thing of, of tarot readings. I don't really. I've had the cards read for me a, a number of times um, for different in different scenarios. Um, I've had other things read like bones and, and scales and, and and other animal remains. You know, like a mixture of, of teeth, shells, um, bones, claws. You know, scales, like I say, like a, bunch, a mixture of different organic things that um, have been used as like a uh, divination method. Um, and I find them all very fascinating. And I think there's there's something to be said for them all. I, I am a believer in magic in that way. Um, 
And, and if you do or don't, that's, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but the point being is that, uh, you know, we, we all, I think, tend to find ourselves in, in, in situations in our lives where we want to not discount the, the validity or, or, the, or the importance of tapping into the, the realm of the unseen, the spiritual realm to either seek an answer or, or seek some sort of guidance, you know? And I, again, I, with, with not being an, an expert on, on all forms of, of divination, I'm not gonna try to speak to things that I don't myself personally have any experience in. <clears throat> but when it comes to runes and, and reading runes, uh, from my experience, it's, it's never been for me that the runes give us answers. It, it's not like a magic eight ball, you know. Um, I think when we when we enter into into a situation where the, the runes are being consulted, or where we're looking for um, some sort of consultation from the runes, we're we're looking at. I want to say possibilities, um, maybe not even probabilities, but potential outcomes based off of certain actions. Um, and again, I, I think that what the runes present or what the runes tell us um, in, in divination um, is, is largely going to be based off of things that we've already done, how much we have put into words well. The well of Urd. Um, what what have we actively done already? So, this marrying of the reconciling of two seemingly, you know, polar opposite ways of, of conducting ourselves is you know do we do we can we how do we incorporate them both uh, you know effectively? And I think one can't be done without the other. You know, if 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 you're not the type to consult any sort of, you know, magical medium, you know, whether it be a, a Volva or a Vitki or a, or a, or a Seithman or Seithkona or um, any other sort of, you know, serious spiritual worker, you know, anybody that has that sort of vision. If you're not the type to, to go down that path, then, 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 then don't, you know, like that's, again, it's, it, it's all a matter of personal things, but it, but it was done in those times, it was done in ancient times where, you know, if you were looking for an outcome of something, if you wanted consultation from somebody who could see things that you couldn't see, that's who you went to. You didn't do it yourself, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's like, kind of like I look at it as like a, you know, if you're not a dentist, you're not going to give yourself a root canal. I don't even think you would if you were a dentist, to be honest with you, you're not going to do that kind of surgery on, your, on yourself. Um, but, you know, if you're not a, if you're not at least a, a, a capable mechanic, you're not going to replace your own transmission, right? Like you're going to seek out the expert of the thing that it, that you need done to get it done properly. <clears throat> and similarly, if if you're looking for answers for things that you maybe feel that you know uh, have a place. You know, to, to, to have divination done or, or any sort of spiritual workings done on, then, then it should be that you go to the person or, or to the people who um, have proven through their deeds, through their works, that it's the right person to go to, you know? Which is tough nowadays because um, so many people, uh, you know, they, they, they buy a book or they maybe attend a seminar or they go to a workshop or, 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 or something, you know, that, that, that one person at that one time. And then all of a sudden they're, they're, a, they're a guru, they're an expert. They've, they figured it out, you know, and they, and they come, uh, they come out with this fake name or this, you know, mystical name that, that makes them appear more than what they are. And it's, it's, they're charlatans, you know, like it's, they're there just to take your money, and, and they're, they're, there's no, there's no realness behind them. Now there are those who 
have dedicated their life to being taught by people who have dedicated their lives to it, right? So there's this almost like lineage um, kind of mentality of behind it where, you know, you you get taught by the one who was taught by the one who was taught by somebody who, right? Like there's this, again, this like lineage mentality behind it. So they have that reputation. They have that refrain, if you will, that says, I know what I'm talking about. I've got the credentials. I've got the, the, the experience. I've got all of the things that are confirming that I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. Not just some fly by night, you know, got my certificate printed off at Kinko's yesterday and you know, I'm a Vicky now, I'm a Govi now, I'm a this, I'm a that. Right? Um, so <clears throat> how do we reconcile that? That's how I feel, you know, if, you, uh, if, if you're not the person to do it and if you're not the, then, then, then don't try, you know, seek out if, if you're, if you're considering incorporating this into your thought processes, you know, if, if like, Hey, I've done everything I think I should do. I want to see maybe the other side of it. I want to see more to it than, uh, than meets the eye, you know, go to someone who is trusted, ask, right. And don't just go for the person that, that first pops up and says, Oh, I know what I can, I know how to do this. I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. Right. Vet them, make sure they're worth that effort and that, that energy that you, that you're, that you're investing in. Um, and, uh, whatever it is, you know, whether it's runes, whether it's some other sort of divinatory method that you maybe haven't seen or heard of before, like, um, for those that have been in the area that were at uh, Shadow Moot <clears throat> last year, um, our Thule, our tribal Thule, my friend Patrick, you know, he's been, you know, developing a system for the larger part of 20 plus years um, that is not strictly, you know, based around like reading of cards. It's 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 actually a bit way more intricate and you know, complex than just that. But from his system that he's developed this agromancy um, system, um, which I would, I would, you know, he's, he's got a crazy schedule. And I think, you know, one of these days, we're just going to have to figure out a time to get him on this podcast and talk about this, you know, in, in a bit more of a, you know, like break it down as much as we're able to. Cause if you've not met the man, if you've not been in person, he doesn't do much on it with social media. Um, because he's still trying to figure out how to do it. It, it. it is that complex. It's not just like, oh, well, here's a deck of cards. Here's how you read them. You know, here's a book on how to do it. It's it's like there's there's multiple decks that make up this system that originally wasn't even, I don't believe at least, uh, I don't think it originated as a system for like divination. It, it, it stemmed from things other than that. You know, he has this calendar. He's got rituals, uh, a ritual system worked into it, a numbering system, an alphabet, like all very, very intricate stuff. And then from it all, you know, the, the symbols, the, the glyphs, um, become mandalic, uh, or, or turned into a, a mandalic symbol that kind of brings it all together. And, uh, he, he can explain it much better than I can. It, it, it sounds like a bunch of wacky stuff right now, but I'm telling you, uh, for those that were at Shadow Moot last year that got a chance to see and present what he what he did for the first time ever. I mean, like I said, the man's been working on this for more than 20 years or the bigger part of 20 years, at least. And last year at Shadow Moot was the first time that it was ever uh, presented to the public in the way that it was. But the uh, reason I brought it up is, again, you know, that may be something that you encounter similarly from somebody or somebody's that you know, and it's like, oh, well, nobody's ever heard of this, you know, nobody's ever seen anything like this before. And yet, you know, they've got all of these years, they've got all of this experience behind them that's that that proves, or that that, that has been proven that, that there's something behind it and that it's, it's beneficial. You know, so don't necessarily discount or discredit something that somebody says just because well, I can't find that in any sort of 
you know, old source material, or I haven't read a book about that, or, you know, <clears throat> it's, again, it's, it's, it is a fine line, and it's a, kind of like walking the, a straight and narrow path on that, you know, because you got some really wacky, wacky things out here that are wacky in a bad way, <laughs> um, but I guess, you know, don't, don't be afraid to explore a little bit and just, ex and, and see, because that's how you learn, that's how you, you know, you know, you don't learn from from just sitting here and waiting for stuff to happen. You you learn by leaving and going out and voyaging and exploring and venturing out and wandering. You know, um, <clears throat> I saw something the other day. Somebody shared. I think it was a. Uh, it was Papa Olufsen, my dear friend and brother, Bielvatir Workshop. Uh, right? Um, he had shared something about you know the the knowledge that uh, doctors. Physicians, healers, sorcerers, shamans, those types, you know, the medicine man, the medicine woman, the witches, the, the whatever name you want to put to them, the the knowledge that they've, you know, uh, achieved and acquired has not been knowledge that they just collected locally. They, they, they've had to go out and travel. And even to this day, right, like medical doctors and stuff, you know, they, 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 they go places. They don't just stay in one place. They, they, they're going to travel. They're going to study under, you know, different locations, different, different sources. And they're going to acquire that, that skill, that knowledge by traveling, by wandering a bit. And I think that's a neat thing to bear in mind with, 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 with Odin and his seeking of knowledge. Again, it's, it's, he's not just getting online and googling it you know he's not just using his godly powers to you know whatever hugen and munin bring back to me is is my knowledge for the day he's he's, he's going out and he's wandering himself and he's seeking that knowledge himself he's putting in the work good way to tie into the to the topic you know putting in the work <clears throat> It's not just waiting for it to land in his lap. It's not just that we, you know, explore all options, I guess. <coughs> explore all options and see what fits, you know? Maybe maybe not everything is gonna fit. Maybe the, I said before, if it doesn't feel right to consult the runes, there's plenty of times, guys, where I've, you know, had things happen and uh, I have consulted the runes I've, I've done rune readings or, or people have asked for rune readings right and um there there there's times for that and then there's other times where i'm like i don't need to i don't need to consult the runes for this i don't need to find out anything else other than what i already know right what i've already done but the the the, com the combination of figuring it out going through that you know, like rational thought process, um, good judgment and all that. You know, sometimes you need that kind of wild look on things. Sometimes you need that perspective that, that changes, not changes, but adds a layer, you know, adds another, adds another layer that you have to peel back and, and explore a bit. But yeah, so before we move on with the episode, though, I do want to um, kind of take a a little detour off here. We're gonna we're gonna jump off the exit, you know. So if you guys need to use the bathroom, now's the time. <laughs> um, like you're gonna say, we're going on these road trips, vacations, you know. Anybody need to pee? Pulling off right now. I'm not stopping again. Um, that's a word from our sponsor. I say our sponsor. It's a word. It's a word from. Um, yeah, we'll call it. We'll say it. We're from our sponsor, right? Um, and this episode is is brought to all of you, um, in part, thanks to the uh, Sacred Trail Society. So the Sacred Trail Society is a volunteer-based community effort for environmental awareness and custodianship. Volunteers work hands-on in local community public wildlife spaces, trails, waterways, parks, and greenways, practicing and encouraging a personal responsibility for ourselves and fellow humankind and the shared wildlife spaces for all life to enjoy. 
Although we are a part of nature, we only visit these places while the plant and animal life there call it home. All trails may be considered sacred in their own right, but even more so for their potential to host meaningful experiences for any who visit or travel them. The plant and animal life that reside there and the spirits of all who lived there before contribute to this experience and offering of opportunity to connect there. Preservation of the natural and wild spaces we share with the earth, water, sky, and all its inhabitants are of the utmost importance in their mission, in our mission. Natural wild spaces are in constant decline as the push to develop land increases. Therefore, the opportunity to share in enjoying them is dwindling, giving us all the more reason to take care of them, doing what we can to maintain them. Keeping the land and water clean from trash, litter, and leave, leaving that do not and leavings that do not belong there are also helping to keep the air clean and the native plant and animal life healthy. Taking part in the effort and movement is as simple as bringing a bag along with you when visiting these spaces in your local community. Collecting trash or litter others have left behind and disposing of it properly, properly and responsibly. The wildlife will thank you, and as will the next person that visits and is able to enjoy the space as it should be, free from litter. The Sacred Trail Society is an affiliate of Appalachian Animism. The Sacred Trail Society volunteer efforts do not include streets, highways, interstate cleanup, or roadways with motor vehicle traffic. Use common sense and do not risk your safety to reach an area where dangers are present. Share your efforts with the, and inspire the community on social media by using the hashtag Sacred Trail Society. Proceeds from store items go to cleanup supplies. You can find Sacred Trail Society on Facebook and Instagram, as well as by going to AppalachianAnimism.com slash Sacred Trail Society. All right. Um, so there you go. Um, I'm very proud to uh, to share that information um, on each episode that I that I uh, that I release now going forward because um, this is something that I'm, I'm, I, I helped co-found um, or or I'm labeled as a co-founder. You know, I, uh, Papa Olafson, myself. Um, I mentioned Patrick earlier, our, our tribal Thule, um, and our tribe Gothi Ulf. You know, we're all. Uh, I guess co-founders collectively of, of Sacred Trail Society, and uh, it's you know as as a, as a, a a Norse animist, I guess you could say myself. I'm leaning more into if I had to put a label to anything. Labels are silly. I mean, it's not it doesn't make or break anything, but you know, Nordic animism <laughs> does have a nice ring to it. It it, it makes a lot of sense with what uh, values I hold. Um, but, you know, having that mentality of, of nature being sacred and taking care of the land and, and, and the things, you know, I was, I was out, uh, earlier this week, um, just on a walk, you know, like I wasn't going out to pick up trash, but whenever I do go out on walks on the greenways and by the river, um, I'm always picking up trash. There's, there's, there's always something to pick up, you know? gum wrappers, soda cans, beer bottles, cups, whatever. And um, I had a bag, you know, there was a little Walmart bag or shop, little shopping sack, and I'm just throwing stuff in there. And several times, you know, um, people did say thank you, you know, respect, I appreciate that. And any chance that I can get, you know, if they're like running past, I'm not going to be like, hey, hey, hold on a minute. Can I, you, know, you got a second I can talk to you about? Or I'm not going to do that. Um, but if they engage and, you know, say, hey, that's great, thanks for doing that, you know, say, you do it now, right? Please carry on, carry this on with, with what you do. You're going in that direction, I'm going this direction. You see something that needs to go in the trash, pick it up and take it with you. Drop it in the trash can the next opportunity you get, you know. It doesn't have to be a lot. Like, you don't have to go out there and pick up, you know, 19 trash bags full of, of litter. Just, you know, whatever it is, it's, you know, most of us have pockets, most of us have a free hand. You know, pick it up, throw it away. You know, 
And I got a couple responses. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Right. I mean, I don't know if they will or not, but at least, you know, it. we don't do it for that reason. Like, we don't do it for the recognition. Um, don't do it for the glory, maybe, but do it out of the pureness and, and desire to want to keep what is sacred holy and, and sacred to us, you know, like keep it, keep it that way. And as we said, wildlife will thank you. And so will the people that come by and, you know, cause they're out there enjoying nature too. You know what I mean? They're not necessarily the ones that left that trash there, but seeing somebody pick it up could be an inspiration for people to say, Oh man, that's a good idea. I want to do that. Um, so check out the link tree link or not the link tree. I keep saying that check out the description for the Appalachian animism website and the, the social media links for sacred trail society. There's also a, uh, an earth day event, uh, coming up. That is a, a, a again, public worldwide event. It's, a on the sacred trail society, Facebook page. Um, so upcoming here soon and in, in whatever the next uh, few weeks, at least maybe less, whatever earth day is. Um, I believe the event is the weekend of the 21st. So I think it's like Saturday, the 22nd or that whole real weekend, whatever. Uh, it's again, just a, uh, an inspired event to go out on the trail, take a sack with you, take a bag, go for a walk and pick up what litter there is and, uh, you know, do better. Um, and as we mentioned before, the, the, the merchandise that gets sold, um, is proceeds for that go back into the organization to, um, you know, provide more supplies and, and, and things to, to further the effort. So, uh, check it all out for sure. Um, but yeah, so anyway, back to, back to what we were saying, you know, um, I, I, I think that how it's done is, is it's done carefully and with purpose. We, how, how we, you know, like don't skip the steps. Don't, don't just go until, let me see what the cards say. Let me see what the tea leaves say. What is, you know, what do the runes say? Um, and, and then don't do that with, and with neglect to the first part of, of things, you know, actually using your head and, and, and talking with people. If you're having a hard time with something, if you're having a, or you just need an extra, you know, set of eyes on it, I mean, you maybe need some, uh, what do I call it, uh, second opinions. Um, there's plenty of times where I'm like, well, I think this is what I should do. I feel like this is what I should do. Let me bounce it off of somebody else. You know, let me let me run it by uh, somebody who I can trust that will provide good counsel, you know, and a good read on it. I don't, you know, I, I don't ever just put stuff out like of, of that nature on a, you know, a public platform. I don't I don't think that people should open up themselves to to that kind of you know, be, be that free about it, but whoever you trust could be just one person, could be a few people, right? Go down that route and, and, and maybe get their insight on it because they could have uh, a way of seeing it that you don't. And maybe that way is, is, is going to enhance or maybe change or, or do something with, with what you're already thinking of. And, and <clears throat> cause let's face it guys, like we all have, that, that, that bias that we approach things with, you know, um, a lot of us, you know, when, when, when we're presented with something that could be a challenge or, or difficult, you know, a lot of us are resorted to what we, what we're going to decide on before we even get there. Like a lot of the times we, we, we uh, reach a conclusion, um, without, logically or rationally thinking through everything first. So because we've reached that conclusion already without doing all that, all of the steps in between are going to be affected by that bias. Um, <clears throat> so especially it comes to like, you know, big time stuff, you know, I'm not talking about like, what should I have for dinner? You know, should I have chicken tonight or steak or I'm talking like 
potentially you know life changing things um or maybe just some stuff that 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 can weigh heavy you know like how one should perhaps deal with family members um when it comes to a particular topic or, or you know subject matter that you know you find conflict with with, with certain people, you know, and you want to address it, and you know, how should I address it? Well, I think I should do it this, that way, or the other. You talk to other people, and get their thoughts or opinions on it, can 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 make a difference, perhaps, or, or change it for good or better, or, or, or you know, for for better or for worse, I should say. Um, you know, maybe you're you're hell bent on it being a certain way, and then you know, you talk to somebody else, and they go, "Man, I wouldn't, I would do it this way." You know, I think, well, why would they say it? Why would they say it differently? Or why would they come up with a different uh, result than I would? Again, it's probably because of that bias. And I, and I half wonder if, if we, as, as individuals, if we, you know, go into something like a, a rune reading or, or, or a card reading, where, like I said, we already have that answer in, in the back of our minds that we've arrived at prior to any sort of rational or logical thought, how much of that affects or impacts what we want to see, you know, from, from the divination. So that's why I say, you know, it's, it's usually probably a good idea if, uh, you know, if it's a big thing like that, that you, you, you maybe go outside of yourself, go to someone who's trusted and ask them to give a reading about the situation if that's what you want to do like if, if, if you're looking for that sort of feedback if you're looking for, for that sort of insight you know an unbiased perspective then you have to take yourself out of it completely you know so I've had to actually I've had to really search myself <clears throat> A few times in my life, more than just a few times, actually, um, when it comes to stuff like that, you know, you know, is the answer that I'm, is the answer that I've arrived at, did I, did I get to that answer before I even looked at all the possibilities, did I give it good, rational, logical thought, did I get some buy-in from people who I should get some buy-in from, some, some counsel from? Did I go into my divination with, uh, you know, an existing bias already? And has that impacted what I'm seeing here? Is, is my vision clouded because of, because of that? You know, so, uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's, a an important part of, of all of this, you know, it's not that we shouldn't or that it's, you know, uh, you know, ill-advised to to just go one way or the other or not incorporate any of those things but do it do it do it rightly do it wisely you know um, so but yeah man that was a that was a that was a really good question and, and it, it gave me something else to think about today when I was preparing for this episode. Um, so Bradley, this is actually uh, thanks to you, Bradley. Um, I'll, for privacy reasons, save the last name. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, thank you, sir. Um, so for everybody that's been you know listening today, watching this episode, I hope that you know you did enjoy it. And I would love to hear. I don't know we all would. As I like to say at the end of the episode, what you thought about this and where you think. The, uh, the, the absence or the presence of maybe ancient or traditional models of dealing with challenges of life and thinking, how they can be reconciled to the, or with the modern approaches to it. Love to hear your thoughts. Please share your thoughts and ideas in the comment section. And if you want to remain anonymous, you want to maybe just write into the podcast, give your thoughts, you can do that by sending an email uh, to MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. Uh, 
Um, you can also call in anonymously at uh, the Midgard Musings hotline, which is 615-671-9832. Um, if you don't want your name mentioned or whatever, just let me know when you send it, and uh, I will leave you anonymous. Very simple, very easy. Uh, but definitely engaging with the platforms as, you know, as much as you want and able, uh, are able to is, is a great way to help support this this podcast when you comment when you like when you share when you do all those things um, it teaches the algorithm to keep distributing it and putting it out there for more people to see so please do all of those things as well don't forget to check the link tree link that's in the description and show notes follow me on all the socials get yourself some merch subscribe follow share do all those things thank you so much for tuning in watching today's episode and listening Till we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you.